So we're shy. So I guess we're gonna try to just like flex this in there. See if we can punch that tree line. Oh, that seems real bad. Heads? What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we are out at Alexander Park located in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and we are going to be talking about the idea of revisiting some old courses or discs that you feel like you might have possibly grown into. A lot of times we tell beginners to avoid discs or places or situations. And honestly, you have to start asking the question over time, when have I gotten better? And honestly, the only way to answer that question is to get out and actually test those things. So we're out here at this course where I shot a video two years ago doing a bag swap challenge with my brother. Looking back on it, it didn't go amazingly. And we ended up shooting plus one on the front nine, which doesn't feel too great. So we're gonna play through the front nine, talk through a couple teaching points and see if it in two years, I actually got any better. Let's dive in. Hole one coming into 285 feet. We are trying to experiment in the open bag, so we're gonna have some new discs that we're testing out. I'm gonna try to go hyzer flip fuse and see if we can get that there. So fuse, super great. Feels like I left this super low to the ground and the fuse just kept gliding and gliding. I think it has six glide, maybe seven glide, but it definitely did work out there. Leaving ourselves like a 17, 18 foot putt. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Starting off with a bird, already better than we did two years ago. Let's keep that vibe going. All right, hole two, 326 feet, but it looks like it's pretty downhill, so we're gonna go reactor, see if we can hang it out to the right and just let it crash on in. I think the biggest key here is because I'm throwing a mid-range at it to not think about crushing it, but letting the disc just do the work, throw it nice and smooth and embrace the height change. Yeah, came up a little short, but I think we're gonna be fine. Definitely left ourselves a little shorter than I thought we did. About a 25 footer. I think we could have gone up to a fairway driver, I guess to make it a little more comfortable. But stepping up to a fairway would have made the landing a lot more interesting. So I think we're fine with the mid range. Just kind of underpowered it a little bit. We trust our putting a bit more than we did when we were here last time though. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Yeah, just like we thought, 24 feet short. But like I said, when you know how to putt, you can honestly misjudge your distances a little more. And that's something that I think we definitely look at this video compared to last already. 25 footers were way scarier two years ago than they are now. All right, so this one says it is in the 422 position. It's gonna be to that wood line and break in. All right, this is one of those holes that I definitely have thought about. If I remember it right though, it's like 100 feet of distance in there and it's 420 to the basket. So I'm just gonna try to go forehand and get it up there. Oh, and we burned that over. Yeah, that seems like that went way too straight. Not enough right action. All right, we're gonna step up here, lay a nice easy approach. Just lay it under the basket. Little extra stability of the pig. Fight on through. Bada boom, bada bing. Easy peasy. I would be shocked if this is a par four, but we took a par. Feels like a par, not like a birdie, but we'll see. All right, sunglasses are coming off because we're in the woods and we just ran into Will Sneed who got his first ace playing a solo round. So uh, he got his with an N of a Hawkeye. What did you get your first ace with? Let me know in the comments below. 270 feet. You're definitely just trying to hit a gap and get out to the right. I think I threw a backhand turnover back then, which is wild because I wasn't throwing a lot of backhand turnovers then. At least not intentionally. Throw it out this main gap and let it push straight. Hopefully get out to the right or I'm gonna put it out the right gap and be super far away from the basket. But hey, we're out there. So it looks like here, all you gotta do is really get out of the gap and you're gonna find a way. I mean, when we talk about progression, if I had this look from 25, 30 feet, I would have been so nervous in the past, but here, I don't think I'm really upset by it or nervous. These are my favorite types of putts. 
because yes, I'm bummed that it didn't have a chance because I put it nose down the whole way and it went underneath the basket, but I wasn't stepping up with my knee shaking either. So it was a good tester range to see if, can we make the putt? Can we not make the putt? I didn't really hit my line, so I didn't put myself in a chance to get a great score on this hole and I wasn't able to capitalize with my putting, but that's okay. You don't win them all and you don't throw perfect rounds every time. And by every time, I mean any time at least if you're me. 243 feet, it sits off to the right. I think if I were stepping up to this in the past, I would automatically just assume it's a forehand because the shot goes from left to right. But the more that I look at it, it's a pretty straight shot. The basket's sitting on the right side. So I think I'm gonna go pole cat, just put it in the middle and let it have some natural turn to the right. Try not to be too afraid of it. Use tee box geometry to my advantage. I think it's just really fun as you come back to a course, try to remember what you're thoughts were and try to remember if a hole felt scary, if a shot felt scary and realize that as you get better, that just isn't the case anymore as you play. I think I'm gonna like that a lot. That went about exactly where I wanted it to, I think, and it's like slide up action. A tree got in the way, but isn't that the whole point of trees to get in the way? That is a bummer. This tree definitely got in my way. Looks like I came in and hit like this right here and instead of getting to ride the pine straw straight kind of redirected it over to the right but if i've said it once this round i've said it a thousand times i am more confident in my putting than i've ever been and so you just have to like lean into that and trust that that are there strengths when you revisit courses that you have that you didn't have before if there was a disc that was too overstable for you have you gained the ability to throw with better form and suddenly that's on the table Either way, having the confidence to throw solid putts is something that I just have to remind myself at all times. Even being someone who would say putting is probably my top strength right now that makes me competitive, that or upshots. Even if you're a good putter, you still have to step up to every single putt and remind yourself, I am a good putter. That is what I need and putt with confidence. So this hole is 205 feet, dead straight, looks like it breaks off to the left. So I think we're gonna go precious child, throw it as straight as we can and let the stability of the pig be the stability of the pig. Sweep left to right, that should give us that release point. Here we go. Oh, two inside. That is no bueno. Welcome to Scramble Town. Just for science, was it the pole cat? Oh. It wasn't the polecat either. Way too much juice for a 200 foot shot. All right. So fun thing that we've got here is that back in the day, we were just thinking about what the disc flew like. We weren't thinking about grind action, anything like that. I'm pretty confident that with this tough pine straw, if I can hit the ground with an overstable enough disc, it should pop up and yeah, give me some ground skip. I don't love this angle, like pulling across my chest. That feels like really low percentage. This feels like this is gonna give me the angle that I want. I just gotta miss this tree. There we go. <laughs> ah, and that, that's why they're called hero shots, because when you don't make them, you look like a dummy. Okay, so it's a bit tough to frame this shot because the basket's right like through this straight line and I got myself into a whole mess of trees. We're gonna throw a floaty flick of the wrist and try to see if we can throw this in to save the three. That would be nuts. I will get out of the way as soon as I release the disc. Ooh. Gave it a chance. I wanna use this disc as an example of showing improvement and progress and understanding that when you miss, you're actually okay with what your miss is. Uh, in the past, if I would've tried to run that shot, this would have been like a good miss for me, maybe being just past the basket or even sort of possibly in front of it because that meant that I had an easy comebacker or things like that. But I have to believe in myself enough now that an 18 footer is routine and believe that I can hit those over and over again and be glad that the 18 footer means this disc had a chance the whole way it had the height and there's no way for it to have the height to hit the chains and probably land just past the basket. If it lands just past the basket, it's coming in at basket height and although yes, this now counts, that's not a great putt. So 
learn to accept and see where am I missing regularly and see if that is also showing you signs of improvement that you become a better player. If there were two holes that I was most excited to get back to, it was this one and hole eight, because this is the hole that this gap used to seem like it was tiny. But as you can see here, it's probably eight feet wide at its biggest hit. And this is also the hole where my brother, Jake, ended up getting an asterisk for his victory because he requested permission to re-tee after this drive. permission to retee. <laughs> now, while this eight foot gap could seem really small, the better you become and the more I've worked with my coach, Mike, putting my feet on the train tracks. If I align myself, I don't really have to worry about that gap because I'm going to put myself in a position that I can trust my mechanics to just send it right on out there. 295 feet, it has some uphill to it. So I am gonna disc up to a fairway driver because although I can throw a disc 295 feet, going uphill for a lot of it. So just like we disc down to a mid range on hole two, we're going to disc up to a fairway driver. Just because you can throw X disc, X number, doesn't mean that every time that distance pops up, it's the right disc for that hole. We're gonna throw this stag somewhat flat, see if it'll flip up and turn and do what I think a stag should do. It's a little more stable than I thought it was gonna be. Definitely could have gotten away with a more flat release on that one. All right, in relativity to the basket, it didn't fade as much as I thought it did. And once again, that's because the uphill made the ground come into play a lot faster than it actually should. And we're past the basket, because then this flight, it definitely never had like an ace run chance, but I guess if I would have pushed it a little harder or thrown it a little flatter, it might've had that ace run chance. Talk about bounce back rate or comeback percentage, or I don't know what you want to talk about it, but we took a bogey and two years ago, Robbie, a bogey and trying to make the certain shot would have been totally shook by that. Uh, I can't believe that we screwed that hole up, but we turned around and we answered with a birdie because we know we can play good golf. You are a better player. Step up with that confidence and know that hole was the anomaly. I'm a good golfer. 218 feet. We're going to give you this wide angle look so that way you can actually see the basket come into play. This is the second hole that I was excited to play because it should be a pretty stock forehand. I threw four shots at it in the last video that I played, which means that my shots were going an average of 50 feet at a time, which is not good. I also hadn't discovered the pig back then, so we're gonna see if the pig can help us out. I actually don't even wanna do too much of a run up. I just wanna trust that I can give this a nice, simple, smooth, straight shot. Straight is our miss, let it fade down the hill. I think he got some nice tree action. We'll see. That actually felt like it was gonna be short. We said that our miss was straight and we wanted to throw straight and I didn't realize that the super straight miss brought this whole array of trees into play, but I'd rather be messing with that array of trees over fading in too early and ending up in all the mess over there. And I would have had a similar look to what I have now. I probably would just be 25 feet further back, which is okay because right here, a nice downhill putt is 100% in my comfort zone. Because as we talked about in last week's video, my miss is traditionally low. So downhill putts are my jam. Anytime I get a downhill putt, I am feeling pretty okay. All right, this hole looks like it is 323 feet, slightly uphill once again. Our question mark would be, do we wanna throw a forehand at it or do we wanna throw the backhand turnover? A lot of options here, but I think that I'm going to lean on this stag once again, because we already saw that if I put it a little more flat, it would have turned pretty naturally. So I'm going to put it on sort of a big swooping Anheuser and hopefully give it enough height that it won't just burn over. 323 feet. I definitely think I can throw this farther than 323 feet, which is helpful because it's uphill. This is a hole that did not feel reachable two years ago with a max distance driver. And I'm hopeful that we're going to be under the pin with a fairway. <laughs> nope. Two nose up. That's okay. We didn't have a circle two putt back then either. So let's see if it works now. All right, let's call it what it is. A little bit of hubris. It didn't help that I threw it super nose up. So it really got up there stalled and then faded out instead of getting its turn that it wanted. Poor disc choice, poor execution, but hopefully we can correct here, throw it in and in on a bird. That would be sweet. Can't birdie them all. 
All right, here we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for us. A par to close things out. We're definitely never upset with pars here, especially on courses that we don't play very often, as in like once every two years. So I hope this was a fun format. Just follow me along for the round as we kind of talk through my thought processes while I'm on the course, but also maybe gaining some wisdom along the way if there was any wisdom to be had. The biggest thing I would tell you is that if you're really looking to see if you've improved, go and grab some discs that were quote unusable in the past and see what they do for you now. Biggest piece of advice that I give is just because you're throwing Throwing distance drivers for the first time doesn't mean that you need to throw harder, which is a trap that a ton of people fall into. Keep your same form and throw it nice and smooth and see what that does versus trying to overpower it or go faster just because it's a quote faster disc. And then lastly, go tackle courses that you haven't played in a while. I bet you will be overall shocked at what you can do on that track. I was plus one back then and I was minus five today with some silly errors along the way. Not a coulda, woulda, shoulda, just what it is. I wanna say thank you for watching and thank you so much for tuning in. If you're seeing me out on the course, please come stop by and say, hey, it is so fun getting to meet all of you and chat while I'm out here. That is why I come to the course is for you. So it makes this extroverted heart extra happy to meet you. With all that said, I hope you have an amazing rest of the week. Thank you for watching. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.